Welcome back to Collins Country. In this episode, we are going to be putting up all the trusses on the pole barn. And I do apologize for the quality of this footage. My mother-in-law was being extremely helpful and recorded this part for us, but I think she's got an older iPhone. Anyway, we want to be very transparent with this process. And this is our first time building a pole barn. Some things go well, some things do not. And putting up this first truss was very difficult and did not go well. But you will see down the road how we figured out a much better process that worked out perfectly. So let's get to it. They are officially putting up the first truss. These are the trusses that we got from Alabama. They are steel trusses, but they're trying to figure out how to put it up because the boom pole only goes up so high. And obviously it's not high enough. Okay, so here, they're not actually trying to install the truss. What they're trying to do is get it high enough and close enough to where the truss would actually be so that they can mark on those back posts of the barn where the truss will lay so they can cut them appropriately and then actually set the truss once all of those six by six posts are cut down and everything is ready to put it in place and actually bolt it down. So that's what they're working on here. And then you can see here where they finally got it into place and James is going around and he's marking all of those posts so he can cut them off and we can set it. We got the top of those four posts cut off. Got this tied. We're ready to lift it up. As you can tell, we went to go pick up this truss right here and it almost folded in half on us. Now this isn't typical for any of the other trusses, but we had put this truss up and down so many times that it started to get a little bit of play in the angle iron. So you can see here we are grabbing a fairly long two by fours and we sandwiched the truss in between them, ran some bolts through it, and it gave it some more rigidity so it wouldn't fold on us as we were putting it up. Now the rest of the trusses that we put up, we never had this issue. And also there's a strap that you can see running along the bottom of that truss. Uh, on the very first truss, which is this one here, we did not have that tight. On the rest of them, we do. And we do think that that made a difference in the rigidity of the truss as we were putting it up. And just like that, the first truss is up. Okay, as you can see, we got our first truss up. We wanted to get it up just to be sure what we were looking, or what we were gonna be getting into for next weekend. Next weekend, I have a lift rented. We're for sure gonna be bringing that lift because this was pretty difficult to put up without it. But uh, we got the truss up there. We're gonna, I'm gonna plumb it up Tuesday. Right now, we just have it braced. It's pretty close already. These trusses are very floppy up in the air. And this one almost folded in half on us. Um, so, but anyways, we're going to work with it, get some more stuff done. We got all the girts up today. We're still deciding on what to do with the lean to right here. Um, we had originally had plans of coming off at the top, just doing a pitch transition, but we really think that's just going to be too high. So I may end up dropping it down. Yep. So, okay. but we want to be able to fit the camper underneath of it. And I think the camper is probably at 10 feet or so, 10 and a half or 11 feet. I can't remember, but uh, I figured if I can get a, at least a 11 foot opening, we should be good on the camper. So we'll see. So a little bit of change to our plans, unfortunately. Um, and obviously we got the girts up and we don't have that top one up because we were going to put that two by 12 up there. But now since we're changing our plans again, it's like, uh, what are we going to do? So just didn't realize how big this was going to end up. That's all. It's good. My dad said that a pole barn in the shop can never be too big, and I think he's right. I think he's right, too. Okay. Okay, so the first thing I did today is I went up to the top of the 6x6 six six post and drilled some holes for where the trusses are going to be bolted through. So I went ahead and prepped all that. I even got bolts sticking out the other end. So tomorrow, when we lift up the trusses, 
we just got to hit it with a hammer right inside the hole of the uh, truss. Now we have to get a two by six board at the very top of these posts. We had left that off originally because we thought it was going to be a two by 12 for our lean to. We're going to bring the roof down, keeping it at the same pitch. So we have yet to calculate exactly where we want that. Obviously we have a two by six in place where it could be. So we might just mash the boards together. But that's why Courtney's over here. We're gonna see if we can get these boards up. It's pine, we're not using our oak up there. So it should be pretty light, should be easy to handle. Okay, got it all done. Now James and I are figuring out where to put the two by 12s below this top board for the lean to that's gonna be on the other side of that wall. And it has to be 11 feet on the outside post because the camper needs 11 foot clearance. And the current posts here are 14 feet. So we don't know if we're gonna drop it down to 13 feet or where. So James is doing that math now to figure it out and we're taking some measurements. And then we'll get those two by 12 boards on so we can do the lean to. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put up our two by 12 board. I did some calculations. I wanted enough board. It's a two by 12, so it's 11 and a quarter inches. So that's pretty wide. We're putting a two by eight on it, acting as the roof rafter. We just got the line chalked where our two by 12s are gonna go. And now James is over here getting ready to cut all the boards, babe. What are you cutting in these boards? I'm just trimming them. They uh, typically Menards. Their boards are about a quarter to a half inch over. I'm just cutting them to 10 foot. Okay. Got them all on. That's what the top of the lean to will attach to. We're up on a ladder right now. As you can see, we're on the top of these posts. We're gonna go ahead and pre-drill holes for the trusses to sit in. I've already got this entire side done over here and uh, it wasn't too okay. bad. So I got my line drawn here. See this line that goes all the way down? That's a level line from 10 on center pulled from the the end of the barn and you can see these little intersection marks that I have here. This is three and a half inches from the top and then from the top 10 inches to here and that's where these holes need to be drilled. So I just have this paddle bit. Uh, this was cheap. You can get those auger bits which work better but this is just fine. Here's our trusses that we purchased from Southern Style Barns and Fencing, located in Alabama. We took a little road trip down there to go pick these trusses up. These are some pretty nice trusses. A little floppy when you're hanging them, but uh, pretty stout though. You can see here they're built all out of angle iron and uh, welded together. We met the welders who actually put these trusses together. Very nice men. Um, really excited about this. This is kind of unusual in our area. We don't see a whole lot of this truss design. So I'm pretty excited about this. It's gonna leave a lot of more space above our heads, more of a cathedral style, which you can also get a wood truss that way, but they're awfully expensive. We got a great price on these trusses. These trusses came in two different pieces and they gave us the hardware to put them together, two bolts in the center, put them together, makes one big truss. We got this lift from the local rental company, it costs $230 a day. We actually got it for the weekend because they don't include Sunday. So we got it on Saturday, and then we returned it on Monday. Keep in mind that a lot of rental companies do not advise hoisting or lifting anything up with the lift other than yourself. So this is a man lift, not a crane. Keep that in mind. But it worked perfectly 
for this in our application. These trusses are not very heavy. They're just a little bit floppy. The boys have been working hard this morning. Got two trusses up now. And let me tell you, the sunshine is very deceiving. It is very cold out and it is very windy, but they're still gonna be working hard today. And hopefully we'll get all these trusses up. Man, they are making so much progress. This is the view from the other side of the barn, from the back side. After this one's plumbed in, we only got two more to go. Okay, we got these 20 foot two by fours here actually kind of pinned in between. We threaded it through the truss to be able to put torque on it, each, whichever which way, so we can actually stand it up straight. These trusses are really floppy until he gets a two by six up there fastened. Uh, this is how we've been kind of holding it still. It, it's worked out for us. James just got all the tops of those posts cut off over here. One, two, three, four. Now they're gonna get that final truss. Okay, the trusses are up on top of the barn. Everything looks really good. Overall, everything went pretty well. It was actually not too bad. Worst part is just stabilizing the trusses once you get them up. We did all this in a day with just three guys. If you have any questions on the truss process, let us know. Otherwise, have a great week.